So today, I will be looking at uh, chapter 20 of the book, which is like a follow-up to subsequent chapter because we have looked at function, how we can use a uh, function to reduce uh, duplication in our code. I think last week we used, we look at, uh, we discuss about modules. So today we'll see how we can pick our shiny app and put our shiny app into an, uh, an R package. So uh, basically uh, the, uh, the, the learning objective is that we are going to grab our app and put it uh, in an R package. So uh, for this, normally in an R package, is always, there is always a structure in which uh, the package uh, needs to follow. We need to have a description file and the description file mainly contains uh, the package metadata because in the description file, we, we are going to know the title of the package, who are the authors of the package, are there, who, what is the license, because we need to specify the license file for the package. We also, there are, um, and they also, we are going to have this directory, which is called the R directory, because the R directory, that is where we put all our functions, all our R, our functions in which we are creating for our package. So they are all going to reside uh, in the R directory. We are also going to see, we, we are also going to see how we can embed our data sets in this data folder. We'll see all those demo. We are also going to look at tests and also the, uh, the package uh, bitnet for the package. So in the book, they also say that if we want to learn more about uh, how we can create a package. So they recommend that we look at uh, the book by Jenny Bryan and Adley Wiccan on our package. I think I think the current latest version there is is the second edition of the book in which we are also in which I am also participating in the courts for the R package. So the benefits are uh, what are the benefits for creating an R package? In general, the set package are beneficial for easily sharing your work. Package provide a common organizational structure and offer improved workflow for loading and launching of our shiny applications. So first of all, in order for us to create our package, though I will, I will be do, doing some demonstration about this, we need to use uh, this function uh, from the use this package, create underscore package, but before we use that function, we need to first of all decide uh, where do we want to place all our files. We need to specify the part where we want our R, our sub files in which we'll be creating with this function. We need to specify where we want to drop all those files. So we just need to give the name of the package in which we are about uh, to create. But in this, they were looking at uh, the greeting app, but I, I will be follow, I will follow through uh, the examples, the example in the book, in the in this other book, I will be going through this example because this example, what they explain here is that first of all we need to load a library shiny. So when we load library shiny, we are going to have access uh, to the functions for the shiny app. So when we first of all we need to wrap our UI and our server, we need to wrap it in a function. Here, in this example, they use my app functions. And in this function, it can take any argument. That is why they put dot, dot, dot. They did not specify anything. It means that that functions can take several arguments can still go into the function. They, they just have a function name, which is my app. Then they call the function. Take, it can take several arguments. So within that, my, my app, they say shiny app. UI server dot dot dot. So when you, we embed this and we just say my app is going to start this default app. And normally in the app, we always have a description file, but I'll come, I will discuss this when I'm doing uh, the demo. Sorry, can, can so, I ask a, 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 a small yes, question? Yes, yes, yes. Um, in the my app function, um, just scroll up a bit. The, in, in running the shiny app UI and server, you also have to put the dot, dot, dot. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
the dot 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 means that addition that is, is specified additional arguments can still go into the function. I, I, I mean in the specific line of code shiny app uh, function where you have got the UI server and then there are the three dots. You also have to put the three dots to run the app that has been wrapped yes, up in yes, a function. Yes, 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 because yeah. we put three dots here also. So that is why we have to put three dots here. But if we did not put anything here, so that means there is no need for us to put the dot, dot, dot here. If I remove this dot, dot, dot from the function, so that means here we need to put dot 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 because we put dot 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 in the my app function. So this was an example app, but in this app in the book, this was a single app in which they decompose this app. In this app, they have library, shiny, then the month feedback UI, which is a function. This function is taking just one input, which is the ID. Then we have text outputs, NS, which is what we did last week for the namespacing controls, namespacing then the user ID and also the feedback. But this app in which we are seeing here that decompose this app into three sub modules. They, de they decompose this app into three sub module, which is what they explained here. They decompose this app into three sub module, whereby they have a file called, they have a folder called the R because all our function will always reside in the R directory. I will, I will explain this. Let me just go through the code so that before I start the demonstration. Then within this R folder, there is this R script called monthfeedback.r. So this R script is going to grab this function. This function is going to go into this R script. And in this function, they also have ID, text outputs, which is NS, which is the namespacing. Input ID is ID, getting the feedback. Then we have mon feedback server, it's still a function. It's taking two inputs, the ID and also the month. Then we have to stop. If not, that means the function is going to stop if this is not interactive. So this function is going to stop, it's going to kick, it's going to return error that, okay, it will not, the function will not run because we say stop, if not, is a condition. So if this is not interactive, so uh, the function will fail to run. Then so they have the module server. This module server is taken, we pass in the ID, then the function, we pass in the inputs, outputs and also the session, then we have the outputs, which will be feedback, which is what we have from here. So we have to render the text, then if month is equals to what October, it's going to return this, you pick a great month. So if the month is equals to October, it's going to return, you pick a great month, else it's going to say, hey, you could do better. So we'll see that demonstration. So that is that for the month feedback UI. So in the book, they also have a, another example, which is the rbetstone.r. This is also a function. It's taking one input, which is the ID. Then this, the input ID, which is the best stone for. Then the text output is still going to be namespacing. Then they, they are passing the input ID and also the months. Then in line, they set it to be true. Then is text outputs namespacing again. And uh, in line is still true. Uh, Bedstone function is still taking input ID, which is ID and months. Then we're still going to terminate this if this is not interactive. Then the, for the server side, it's still the same thing. It takes uh, the same input as our module server, which is inputs, outputs, and station. Then for the stone, this is a data set, which uh, will, will, I will load the data set. Then we'll make it to be reactive. Then the stone, dollar sign stone, the stone data sets, I think, okay, is still down. Okay, this is where they call the data sets. But in the book, 
I think uh, they were supposed to put the URL for this data set, but I will demonstrate that. They were supposed to put the URL here because if we are reading the book, if you just grab this and paste in your console, you do not have the data set. So the output dollar sign months, it should be rendered text for all the months because the month it was from January to December. Then we have output dollar sign stone, render text, all the stone. Then that leaf, then that's the app.r, which is the actual function that will start our Shiny app. They, they load the data sets after loading Shiny. They call in the data sets. They still have months, which is for our January to December. Then the UI, which is the navbar page, which is the uh, the page, then the sample, the title of the app is going to be sample app, then the tab panel, which is our panel in the, that will pop up in the app, pick a month where we are going, the user, as they are interacting with the app, they are going to select specific months, then select inputs, input ID is going to be the month, then the label is what is your favorite month. Then choices is going to be months. So it's going to all, all, all these months. Then top panel, which is input ID, is going to be feedback. Then the, we have month feedback uh, UI. We need to pass in the month feedback UI, which is tab, tab one. Where did they specify tab one? Month feedback UI tab one. I can't see. Okay, this is the UI tab one. Then we have tabs two, which is the bed stone that we have defined above, which is bed stone UI, which is going to be tab two. Then the server function, they now call the they call the month feedback server. We have in input ID, which is our tab one. We make it to be reactive. Also, tab two, we ensure that because it's a reactive call, then we have shiny app UI and servers to start the app. So here they did a slight modification here. It's still the same thing because normally for you to start the app, you need to wrap that app into a function. So what they did here is that they wrap everything into a function called month app which is a function, then I'm put the dots, 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 means that the additional arguments uh, can go into the function. Then once we load this data set, we are going to delete this line because the data will reside in the dot, dot R data because we are going to delete that line. Then this will ensure that once we export this function, we are going to start uh, the app. I think that is that. I think the next, I don't know if there are any questions before we start the demo. I should go ahead with the demo. Are yes. there any? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let me share my R Studio. Okay, so. This is my house studio. So what's normally they recommend? So we say library, we need to load because once we are developing package, there is a package dev tool and dev tool is also going to load uh, the use this uh, package because we need this two package when we are developing. So the function we want to use is create, create underscore package. So when we use the create underscore package, so the next thing for us to do is for us to specify uh, the parts, the parts where we want this package to be placed. So I'll just put parts is equals to, I use the dot, 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 which means I want to move one directory at the top, means I'm moving out uh, from my documents. Uh, I think from my documents, the next sub directory is going to be my, uh, desktop, so I just put a forward slash and I call the app as month, month, month app. 
the name of the app. So once I run this, it's going to open a new R Studio session. So I will share that session. It's going to start with a new R Studio session. So I will just go there and share that month app. Where is it? Okay, it's here. So it's going to open a new R Studio session. So it's going to put this git ignore file dot r build ignore means that uh, once we are uh, to build compile this file so the package is, the, is going to ignore any file that is in the r big ignore so like the month app dot r approach dot r approach and dot user all these files they are going to be ignored when we want to build this app then we're going to have the description file which is like the package metadata. We have in the package, which is month app that we are trying to create. Then here, yeah, the title, we need to give it a title. Uh, we need to give it a title. It just, just say month shiny uh, demo. So then the version, Let's just say we, we should leave the version as default. Then the person which are the author of the package, I put my name there. Uh, then here I put my email address. At Gmail. Okay, so I can leave others like that. The description file, I can also edit this. I say this package helps me to pick unique ones of the year. Just give it anything. Then for the license for now, we, are, we need to specify the license, but I will come back to this. Then encoding is always UTF-8. R oxygen list markdown is true. Then R oxygen two nodes is 7.2.1, but we'll see how we use, uh, because if we want to generate uh, the documentation for the package, we need to use R oxygen two because it's going to convert all this code into LaTeX then it's going to generate the documentation for the package. So once I'm through, I save. Then here we are having namespace, the package namespace. What this one does is that we have gotten a package. Our package is we are going to have uh, several files and several functions. And we need the user that are interacting with this app. They need to have access uh, to those functions. So we need to ensure that we always export those functions, those functions that are exported from this R. So we are going to, those functions that will appear here, but we will not do all this manually. R Oxygen 2, once we generate our documentation, is going to export those functions and place those functions here. So the users, as they are interacting with the package, uh, they, will going to, they are going to have access uh, to those functions. So but I will come back to this. I'll still come back to this. I'll still come back to this. So the last file here is the R folder. This is where all our uh, scripts, all our functions, our if we have different file scripts in which we define several functions. So this is where uh, we are going to find them. So in the book, let's let me share the book again. I think the first demo they did there. Uh, let's say. We need to load our because as we use create underscore package, it has taken us into a fresh R session. So I need to load my dev tool again, library dev tool to start my R session again. So the next thing for me to do is I need to use use underscore R within this use underscore R. What do I want to create? I need to create an app called app, let's say app.r, where the function that will start the shiny app will live. So that is the first 
it creates a script. So when we say use underscore R, use underscore R is coming from the use, this function is coming from the use this package. So it's going to specify certain active projects, desktop, months.app, modify R, app.r. So for if we want to run test, we should use underscore test to create a matching test file. But we'll come back uh, to this. So I'll just go back to that book. Let me go back, share the book again so that we grab, you see how I, the codes in which I want to copy from the book. So I create the, the one I create now is the app.r. So where is the app.r? Where is the app.r? App.r5 is this, yeah. Is this, this is what is starting the shiny app. So I'll just copy this, go back to my R studio. Yes, month up, go back and just paste this here. Okay, but there is still one thing here. There is still one thing here because this bet stone CSV, I don't have that data set. So, but the data set is still in that book. I grab it from the uh, GitHub repository. I just copy uh, the URL because I don't have that data set. Where is it? Is here. This is the book. It's still the still the book. I just grab this URL. I copy the URL from there. Then I share. So I copy that URL. Then I once I come here, this best stone CSV, I paste it here. Format it a little bit. Not this. So I need to run this. Remove it here. I need to run this so that it will download this data set. Okay, so once I have this data set stones, specs, so it shows what are there in the data sets. This is the stones data set, it has the months and also it has stones. So what the next step in which they discuss is that we need to make sure we put this data set in the package. So for now, we only have our R folder, and this R is only having app.r for now. So for us to do that, I say we need to use use underscore data, and this use underscore data is coming from the use this package. We also have use underscore data raw, so let's use underscore data. So the next thing I do there, I just pass in the stones that is in my environment. So once I pass in that stones, it creates a new folder called data. It creates a new folder. I said adding R to depends field in description. So if I go to the dependency, the description file, it has added R to it. It has created a new folder called data, setting lazy data to true. So it's going to make sure that each time I start this package, uh, if I, I'm not making use of the data, it's going to be lazy evaluated. Lazy evaluated. Saving stones to data stones dot all data. So when we now check this, the stones data set is the stones dot rda. So what I will do then next is that since I have it, I just have to remove this in my environment. Okay, I remove that in my environment. So the next thing is that we are still working. In this .r folder, we are still here. There are two more files we need to create here. We need to create, we need to create the best stone.r and month feedback.r. So what I'll do there is that I still use use underscore r. So here I have month, month feed, month feedback dot r. So when I run that. It's going to create a new folder here called monthfeedback.r. So what I'll do there is that I have to go back to the book to grab the code. I need to go back and grab the code for monthfeedback.r. So monthfeedback.r, which is here. Where is it? 
on feedback dot r uh, on feedback yeah this is it so i just copy the code then i go back i go back i go back and i paste it there then i save it okay so we have gotten months feedback dot r is there so the last one is bedstone.r. So we still use the use underscore r. We have bed, bed stone, bed stone dot r. I think that is it, bedstone.r. So it's going to create bedstone.r. Then I have to copy, copy the code from here, uh, bedstone.r, which is this code, grab this. I think that is all, that is all I need. So bedstone.r, paste it there and I save. So I've gotten the R folder, the description file. So normally uh, for us to test this, there is a function in dev to call load load all so when we load all when we load all uh, we are going to have access to that function we can experiment with our package so each time we are working we can experiment this shiny app i can just say months 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 what is this months uh Month app, which is this, so I can just run it. We can see we have our shiny app. We, I, though we are still experimenting, remember they say when we pick a month that is equals to October, we remember the condition. So when I say the month is October, sorry, let me just zoom in a little bit. This is the app. When month is equals to October, so there is a certain feedback. That stone, so we can see the feedback. You pick a great month. So that was the feedback. So when month is equals to maybe June, the feedback will remain the same. Hey, you could do better. So we can see the, so let's go back to the app and let's still look at the structure of the file. We, we look at the description file. What is What has changed? It has added lazy data true. Depends, it always depends on R that is greater than or equals to version 2.10, R oxygen two nodes, but we, we need to choose a license. So for me to put a license here, I need use, use underscore MIT license. There are different licenses. So once I put use underscore MIT license from the use this. So once I run that, it's going to automatically put that license here. This, it will create license.md, then it's going to update, it's going to update uh, the license here. So that is that, it puts the license. Uh, for the namespace, for the namespace for now, though the package is working from in the book, they did not discuss anything about our oxygen too, because they said it's not the right time, but it's for in my own demonstration, I will still go ahead and put the documentation of this package. So what I'll do there is that when I come for the namespace, no exported function yet. If I come to the R directory, the app.r, okay? So once I am here, so what I'll do there is that I need to put the command shortcuts to put that is control, alt, shift, and R because that is for Windows, I think for Mac, it will be Command plus Alt plus Shift plus R, or, the, or you can click on code. Once you click on code, you come to insert R oxygen skeleton in R Studio. So once I click on that, it's going to create this skeleton, which is R oxygen too. We don't you, it's going to create the default skeleton that I need. Okay, so here, yeah, here is going to be my input that is going in. Here, the title, uh, let me say demo. Let's just say demo shiny. 
up for months. Uh, return value, what are we returning? Uh, let's say, let's just say a list of all the months. For example, I don't have any example. So once I am through with this, I save this. So for me to create my documentation, so the documentation will draw, once I document, it will create another folder called man. So once I click on documents, documents is coming from dev tool. So once I click on it, I say document this, it's going to create the man folder, okay? And in the man folder, once I click on the man folder, it has created the documentation, which is monthapp.rd, which is the R documentation. It creates monthapp dot rd it shows that this is a documentation so it also exports if you check the namespace where is the namespace if i check the namespace it shows that exports months up it shows that this function has been exported so it shows exports months up so in that case i can just put a question mark and say months months i'd say months up I'm sorry, let me load it because I've made changes. This time we work with the package. We always load all so that this I can experiment on it. I say months up, months up. You can see that we have months up, which is now an exported function. We also have stones, which is the stones data set. It shows that we have this, this function, this package has one function which calls Months app that will start the shiny app. These stones, this is the stones data set that I imported earlier that is in this uh, data set, the R data. So I think this, this is very uh, useful. So, but when we are through experimenting with the package, though I try to do check, I try to run check uh, to see for possible errors, but I I discovered there were still some issue. It will still return some warning. When I say check from dev tool, when I run check from dev tools, it's going to run check because it's always good before we submit this package to CRAN that we check for possible errors so that we can fix it. But the package is okay, it's working fine. Then when I'm through, I am going to install this package. We can even push it to GitHub, then we can install it from GitHub, then we experiment with the package. It's going to show that I have one error that X zero one in zero notes, and this error was saying there was some function from shine. Okay, library shiny is complaining that I need to add shiny to the description file because all our functions from packages, we must ensure they are, we update our description file. So what I'll do is that I'll say use underscore package from the use this package, and I ensure that Shiny is added to, the, to this description file. You can see I added Shiny, which is always import Shiny. So once I'm done with that, I still run check again to see what I've got wrong, then when I am through, I just install the package. It's now zero errors, two warning, two notes. It's complaining N as the namespacing this function we are not imported. But when I try the app, there were no issues. So I can just, when I, let's assume that everything is fine, I can just install this package uh, on my machine. I can just install it. Uh, what is this? None, three, just assume, just install it. You can see the months app done, months app 
I now have this app on my system. So let me restart my session. Restart R to start on the fresh session. Just then I open my scripts. So I say library, shiny. Okay. And library. Months, months up. So once I have months up, which is a package, I can just call months, months up. It will just start the app. I think that is all for the book. That is all what they discuss. So next week we will, we run into. I will still keep this package because next week I'll be the after next week after the. Daylight saving time, we'll be discussing testing. That is, I think I'll still use this same app in which I have to discuss this testing aspect. So that is all what I have. I don't know if there are any questions. No question. Uh, that demo was so amazing. Thank you. to January. October. Feedback. Yeah. So I, I actually have a tiny, tiny bit of a question um, about uh, to create the documentation, you have said it creates a man folder. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so we, we are not manipulating anything. It will be as yes. it is. No, once okay. we do like this, months, I think the function is months, months, uh, months up. Let's see. Months up. Could leave it, you have to stop the shiny app from running fast. Okay, okay, sorry. Months app, yeah. You uh -huh. can see demo shiny app, description, demo shiny app, months, months app, dot, dot, dot. So you just create this. This is how you can put your documentation there. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, I think they were discussing about deployments in the book. I think they said either we should read the engineering production shiny app, maybe how we can deploy the app. If you are, let me share. I think they were discussing about how to deploy the app, where they do recommend uh, we should read the engineering production shiny app. Where is the book? I think they discuss about deployment here. Uh, your deploy your applications. I think they talk about deployment dev tool check, which we have done. They talk about several ways in which we can deploy this app. Either as shinyapp.io that we can push it there I think we host it there for free. But here also, they also explain Golem, which is another framework in which we can use to put our app in. It's, but Golem is also a package, in which we, but we follow another syntax, in which we can still pick this same app, put it in a Golem, in, in a package that is using the Golem framework. Though I'll still read this book because I found this book also is very useful. I don't know if we can do another course for this other one. The engineering production, I think this is a good book. Also, JavaScript for R is also another good book in which, because the same syntax, it's, so I'm then reading this other book. I think this is a very good book. 
to follow up with what I learned in Mastering Shiny. So I think that is where we'll stop. When we come next time, after the daylight saving time, I just talk about testing. It's testing how to run tests. Awesome, thank you. You you saying that to lead the testing discussion? Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I've already signed up for testing. Awesome, thank you. And then we'll only be left with two. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Odlu. I I must say uh, this was a productive discussion. Yeah, and I uh, following up the demo actually uh, made so much sense apart from reading the book. Yeah, um, I, I have no comment, no question. It was just a wonderful discussion. Okay. And then do you have anything to ask or comment? Um, nope, no questions on my end. Uh, this was great, thanks. Thank you. So, so we'll see you after the break. Yes, so we'll not meet next weekend. We'll meet yes. the okay, awesome. All right, thank you okay. and have yourself a good afternoon, good morning okay, or bye. good evening. I'll see you. Bye. Bye.